caffeine as a reinforcer makes us feel slightly better or a lot better in the immediate minutes and hours after we ingest it. So it's acting as a reinforcing agent, not just while you're under the effects of caffeine, but for the things that preceded the ingestion of caffeine, which is why you return again and again to caffeine containing beverages such as coffee and tea, or maybe even foods that contain caffeine, even if the taste of those foods is not something that you would otherwise consider especially delicious. In fact, most people, when they take their first sip of coffee or tea or other caffeine containing beverage, they find it to be very bitter. And that's not because of the taste of caffeine. It's because of the taste of the beverage itself, independent of caffeine. However, when caffeine is present in there, they come to prefer that taste over most all tastes. In fact, they will, as I mentioned earlier, will invest a lot of financial resources and time and energy to make sure that they get that beverage. What they're trying to make sure is not that they get that taste, but that they get the caffeine. It is that positively reinforcing. And the taste, therefore, takes on new significance, new meaning, and we come to associate it as positive. And in fact, most of us, including myself, love the taste of espresso, love the taste of coffee, love the taste of yerba mate, even if the initial taste, the very first time that we consume that beverage was either neutral or negative. And that is all because of the reinforcing properties of caffeine. But if you're one of those spring up and attack the day, or you're uh, one of the people who moves more slowly into your day, regardless, there's still some residual adenosine in your system. And this is particularly the case if you did not get enough sleep or enough depth of sleep the night before, the, the correct ratios of slow wave sleep and rapid eye movement sleep. And for those of you interested in optimizing sleep, I'll just refer you to our Master Your Sleep episode of the Huberman Lab podcast, the Perfect Your Sleep episode of the Huberman Lab podcast. And we have a toolkit for sleep, all of which are available, zero cost, time stamped, et cetera, at hubermanlab.com. You wake up in the morning and your adenosine levels are low, but they're not zero. And if you didn't sleep that well or deeply enough the night before, you're going to have more adenosine in your system. You might think the logical thing to do is therefore to drink caffeine and to block the adenosine that's there. But what happens if you do that is there's an accumulation, a sort of glut of adenosine that hangs around. And then in the afternoon, when the effects of that caffeine start to wear off, you will experience the so-called afternoon crash. As I mentioned earlier, there is a way to clear out the adenosine that's present when you wake up in the morning and to clear it out essentially completely without just blocking its receptors and letting it accumulate or hang around. And the way to do that is to deliberately spike your cortisol. Now, many of you have heard of cortisol, the so-called stress hormone, as a bad thing. And indeed, chronically elevated cortisol is a bad thing. It depletes your immune system. It's bad for psychosocial effects. It tends to make us feel anxious and on and on. But cortisol itself is not bad. Cortisol is wonderful. Cortisol enhances the efficiency of the immune system. It makes us alert and focused. It stimulates our metabolism. It does a huge number of positive things, provided that it is released in a circadian fashion, that is at the appropriate times every 24 hours, and that it tends to peak very close to waking. In fact, one of the reasons you wake up in the morning assuming that you weren't woken up by some noise or, or sleeping in an environment that's too warm, et cetera, is that your cortisol levels start to rise. And shortly after waking, your cortisol levels will start to reach their peak. And when I refer to a cortisol pulse, that's just the I mean, biology nerd speak for a rise and peak in cortisol. You want that cortisol pulse to occur early in the day close to waking. And you want that for a couple of reasons. First of all, if you don't restrict that cortisol pulse to early in the day, it will tend to bleed into the later parts of the day. And actually a late shifted cortisol peak is one of the hallmark signatures of depression, low level depression and serious depression. And it can start to disrupt sleep and certainly can disrupt mood metabolism and your immune system. So you want that cortisol peak early in the day. How do you ensure that that happens? Well, you wake up in the morning and whether or not you're a bounce out of bed type or you're a more groggy, you know, kind of wade slowly into the day type like I am, you wake up and you don't ingest caffeine. G fine and in fact, beneficial to hydrate with water and electrolytes. Terrific, in fact, I would say 
necessary to get bright light in your eyes, ideally from sunlight. I've talked about this many, many times before on the podcast. If you wake up before the sun comes out, then turn on bright artificial lights. But then certainly once the sun is out and even on cloudy days, in fact, in especially on cloudy days, get outside for anywhere from five to 20, maybe even 30 minutes. Do some work outside, take your breakfast outside. If you're a breakfast eater, get something done outside, even if it's just to get outside and get bright light in your eyes. Why? Well, because it's been shown in studies on humans that getting bright light in your eyes in the first hour after waking or as soon as possible after waking increases the peak of that cortisol pulse by 50%, five zero. And that cortisol pulse, yes, increases mood, yes, increases alertness, but it does one other very important thing, which is that, that through an indirect pathway, it can clear out any residual adenosine that might be present in your system when you wake up in the morning. Again, this is going to be especially important for those of you that are not getting as much sleep or as much quality sleep as you would like. 